Welcome back, fellas, to the program for the weekend, and here are some of the latest news. Indonesia to prioritize land border discussion with Timor Leste. Indonesia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs representative Abdul Qadir Zailan explained this after meeting with the Special Assistant of Timor Leste's Chief Negotiator Ambassador Roberto Suarez at the Maritime Borders Office of the Government Palace in Dili. Abdul Qadir Zailani said this year Indonesia is prioritizing the discussion of land borders with Indonesia's neighboring countries such as Timor Leste. During the meeting, we had further discussions about steps that could be taken by the two governments to accelerate border negotiations. As is well known, currently one of the priorities, the Indonesian government is currently finalizing all border issues with neighboring countries, including Timor Leste. At the same time, the special assistant of Timor Leste's chief negotiator ambassador, Roberto Suarez, expressed his gratitude for the meeting as it's a great honor since it can find a solution for land border between Indonesia and Timor Leste. Robot Baita, Simbu Haunia counterpart. It's a great honor for us to welcome his first visit to our country to carry on the readiness of both parties in order to find quick ways on how to immediately solve the differences between us, such as the unsolved emotion mainly in regards of the land border, and both parties continue to express our readiness commitment, continue to prioritize it. Expectedly sooner we will find the best solution for the border issues with Indonesia, and it will pave a huge way for a great cooperation between Timor-Leste and Indonesia. Indonesia. Roberto added, this opportunity can open a wide path between Timor-Leste and Indonesia. Sri Chin Moi Wanana's Home Peace Run will organize Peace Run program in Timor-Leste. Sri Chin Moi Wanana's Home Peace Run program committee will organize Peace Run as a way of sharing peace message in Timor-Leste. The reason he created the Peace Run was to share the message that peace and harmony and love start in each one of our hearts. So we have been running with this torch through more than 160 countries to share that message and to give people a chance to express their own love and dreams and hopes for peace. And on Friday, no, on Monday, February 6th, we will have the launch of the Timorese Peace Run 2023 at 3.30 p.m. here in, here the, in the parliament. The international representative of the Sri Chin Moi Center, Dr. Agra Halivine said, when you give peace to anyone, celebrate from all in love and peace, all to improve a better high and everything is from the heart, not from the mind. Emotion, but from the heart. This is true peace and expressed for that, and he adds Timor-Leste as an open heart for all countries. Teaching the message that peace, as Shalil said, peace begins in the heart of every person. So we do not, we are not politicians, but we are not for one party or another party, we're for all the people, because we take the Timor-Leste people as brothers and sisters. Just when we go to a country, we're, we're your family. And I must say in Timor-Leste, that we have received the greatest reception. Timor-Leste has accepted the peace run with the most love, the most heart of any country we've been to in the whole world. So you should be very proud that Timor-Leste has open hearts. And uh, I remember when we first came here, you know, and, and we had all the leaders from all the parties were there when Sri Chinmoy first came here in 2004 and offered a lecture at the hotel. We had all the leaders from all the parties were there when Sri Chinmoy first came here in 2004 and offered a lecture at the Hotel Timor and prayer for peace. And every single time since then, we've been received as brothers and sisters. So we thank you for <laughs> helping, letting us be a part of your family. The Timor-Leste House Speaker, Aniseto Guterres Lopez, said Peace Run program is a program which share peace message to the world, including Timor-Leste. We had a courtesy visit from the Street Chinmoy Peace Run Committee to Parliament today to discuss about organizing the third time Peace Run in Timor-Leste, where it will be launched on 6th of February 2023. 
Guterres Lopez said, Sri Chinmoy won in his Home Peace Run Worldwide program as a race for peace, which has been held in all countries of the world, and it's been three times in Timor Leste. When asked about the existing statue of Sri Chinmoy in the front yard of Timor Leste Parliament, Guterres said that is a symbol and meant that Timor Leste has taken part in the Sri Chinmoy's vision and mission on peace. The Peace Run event will be held on Monday, 6th of February 2023, at 3.30 p.m. at the Parliament House, and it's aimed to share peace message in Timor Leste. Timor Leste needs to ratify more than 300 agreements to become permanent member of ASEAN. In 2022, through an ASEAN high-level meetings of 40 and 41 in Cambodia, ASEAN member states agreed and declared the accession of Timor Leste membership to ASEAN as the 11th member with the observer status. Within the observer status, Timor Leste still have no right to veto or have no right to take any decision in meetings between ASEAN member countries. Based on this reason, the Timor Leste Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Adol Giza de Arouju Magno, said Timor Leste needs to adopt numerous of agreements for Timor Leste to become ASEAN permanent member in the future. There are many processes we need to comply with. We need to adopt several legislations and conventions. ASEAN has existed more than 50 years, and they have laws and agreements which produce before we adhere to ASEAN as a member. And we need to consent to all of this agreement ASEAN has. Once we have approved all of the agreements, it is a process, and that is why we haven't become the actual member. And there are several process, several agreements, and we won't be able to become a member since we have not ratified yet and we would not be able to adhere. There are numerous agreements, such as visas agreement, which we need to approve for 10 countries for the visa to be freed for all state members. Next is the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration, Nuclear Free Agreement, Dispute Method, so there are 300 more of it. Magna added, even within an observer status in ASEAN, sooner Timor Leste will be taking part in any events alongside ASEAN member countries. But before summit next week, I have received an invitation to take part in the ASEAN Council Ministry meeting with ASEAN Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation State members. This will be first meeting for us to take part as a member of ASEAN. And there will be a discussion about Timor Leste's accession formal ceremony in May 2023. I spoke with Prime Minister earlier, and he's pleased about taking part in the summit ceremony for us to be accepted by the ASEAN member state formally. ASEAN was established on 8 of August 1967 in Bangkok, Thailand, by five nations such as Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. The current member states of ASEAN are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. First flight of Chinese tourists lands in Bali after three years. Indonesia welcomed its first flight of Chinese tourists to the resort island of Bali three years after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and following the easing of strict border measures by the Chinese government to control COVID-19. For many of the Chinese tourists, this was the first time overseas after staying in the mainland for the past few years. I'm very happy because for three years uh, we can't go outside, but now we can. And, and uh, the first place I come is Indonesia. The arrival of Chinese tourists also signaled a new boom in business for tourism-related company owners, such as Baba Sendiko Gunawan, who owns a Chinese restaurant in Bali's Denpasar area. China is one of the biggest sources of tourists for Indonesia, especially for tourism-reliant destinations such as Bali. Statistics agency data showed nearly 2 million Chinese tourists visited Indonesia between January to November in 2019. Chinese tourists feel happy and emotional returns to Thailand after three years limited by pandemic COVID-19. Chinese tourists are returning to Thailand with vengeance for their first trip abroad since the coronavirus pandemic at China reopens its borders. 
with China celebrating the Lunar New Year, Asia's tourism hotspots have been bracing for the return of Chinese tourists, who spent $255 billion a year globally before the pandemic. Countries from Thailand to Japan had depend on China as their largest source of foreign visitors. Returning Chinese tourists have also brought joy to travel companies like Tip Top Destination, which provide daily trips on speed boats to nearby islands. Oranuk Mongtong said on the resort island of Phuket that we're glad that China finally allowed their people to travel and that they expect to return to pre-pandemic numbers by this March. The Thai government is expecting at least 5 million Chinese tourist arrivals this year with some 300,000 coming in the first quarter. Thailand Elephant Camp welcomes Chinese tourists by buying new elephants. The owner of the elephant camp on Thai Paradise Island Phuket welcomed Chinese tourists with the purchase of brand new elephants. In response to rising bookings after the Lunar New Year, the elephant camp has expanded its infrastructure and more program for tourists who prefer to observe elephants without riding them and also other ways of interactions. Hey. Chinese reopening raises hopes for the return of Chinese visitors, who accounted for nearly a third of Thailand's 14 million foreign tourist arrivals in pre-pandemic 2019. Thailand government expects at least 5 million Chinese tourists this year, with some 300,000 in the first quarter. Thailand police intercept one ton of crystal meth and drugs. Thailand police said that over one ton of confiscated crystal methamphetamine seized in early January from three separate cases were destined for neighboring and other countries. According to the Narcotics Suppression Bureau press release, the 1,145 tons of crystal meth or ice were mostly being smuggled inside tea and coffee packages hidden in secret compartments of vehicles. They were being transported from the north and northeastern region. The drugs were heading southward to the border areas. Authorities added police refused to reveal the market value of the intercepted drugs. Six suspects have been arrested. <laughs> Assistant Commissioner General of the Royal Thai Police, Prachua Pongsuk, told Reuters that advanced technology has been used in mass production of the illicit drugs and authorities will be tightening measures to prevent drugs from slipping through various trafficking channels. Police said an investigation is still underway to widen the search for other escaped fugitives. China records lowest temperature in northernmost cities since 1969. China's northernmost city of Mohe broke the record for the coldest temperature since 1969 in the country's history, with the lowest temperature plunging to minus 53 degrees Celsius. The record was set at a weather station in the town of Amur, Mohe City, in Heilongjiang province, marking the lowest temperature ever recorded in the province and the lowest ever observed by the Chinese meteorological system. The figure broke the previous records of minus 52.3 degrees Celsius. Local authorities have doubled efforts to ensure normal heating and water supplies for residents during the ongoing spring festival holiday season. Mohe is often referred to as China's Arctic town and is one of the few locations on the country to have subarctic climate. Winter in the city begins in early to mid-October and lasts until late April, and average temperatures can stay below freezing for up to eight months every year. Philippines welcomes back Chinese tourists with music and gifts. Philippine officials welcomed the return of travelers from China before the pandemic at Manila's main airport getaway. Uh, great, I feel great. Uh, uh, so many happy faces here. We anticipate even more Chinese tourists to arrive and which will greatly help us in our efforts to transform and to recover the tourism industry as our intention is not only to regain our pre-pandemic numbers but to exceed it. Tourism staff wearing traditional attire played bamboo marimba and handed out shirts and necklaces to passengers who arrived on a flight from Xiamen, the first direct flight from China to the Philippines. Chinese travelers no longer need to quarantine or return home, and holiday bookings have surged. 
government data showed China was the Philippines' second largest tourism market with 1.7 million visitors in 2019. Just 39,627 visitors from China arrived in the Philippines in 2022. The Philippines, known for its powdery white sand beaches and lush marine life, is targeting 4.8 million foreign tourists this year after 2.6 million in 2022. Japan wants employers to pay more, but some small business say they can't. Japanese supermarket owner Hiromichi Akiba has built his bustling business through close ties with its neighborhood and why he said he can hike prices, which would have allowed him to give his workers a pay rise. Mathematically speaking, you will think it was okay to rise the price of your products when your cost and other expenses have gone up. But when I look my customers in the eye, I can't do it. It's a tough situation to be in right now. Costs have risen for everything from shipping to packaging to electricity, while the weak yang jacked up prices for imported meats, fruits and vegetables. Even domestic items were pricier since feed and fertilizer are often imported. Akiba's efforts to cut his expenses including switching off some of the lights in his store, but he said he still can't afford to increase wages despite calls from Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to do so. Employee Taro Yamada, a 19-year-old university student, a rise in his 1,200 yen or $9.28 hourly pay would be welcome, enabling him to eat more balanced and healthy diet. Yoko Yamada, a composer with a shopping basket on her arm, said the government needed to tackle the rising cost of living. Thank you everyone for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekend.